If you're watching this on September 4th, that means it's Beyonce's birthday. Yay! All my single ladies, all my single ladies. By the way, that that's not Beyonce. That That's not Beyonce. So Beyonce has put out eight studio albums over the last however many years, not, not including the albums that she did with Destiny's Child, just solo albums. And so today had me thinking, in what order would I rank Beyonce's albums from not so great to absolutely great? And so to tally this up, I went through all these solo albums that she's released and I counted all the songs on each album that I like so I could fairly fraction up each album to know which one I ultimately liked the most. Also of note, the album I Am Sasha Fierce, I decided to separate into two categories, one for the I Am songs and one for Sasha Fierce since they both have different feelings to them. So technically we'll say nine studio albums. Coming in at number nine is the I Am portion of the I Am Sasha Fierce album. This is the side of the album where she decided to get really into her bag of like, I'm gonna prove I'm a singer. I'm gonna do all these dynamic songs that let you know I have a vocal range. And hey, to her credit, she does have a great vocal range. It's just that most of the songs on there, I'm not really feeling. I ranked a lot of these albums based on how skippable the songs were in comparison to how many listenable songs I felt there were. And so for me, this album has like two listenable songs. The first one, If I Were a Boy, and the other one being Halo. And that could just be because they played those songs so much on radio that I just said, Okay, I'll listen to them, but I never go back to the I Am album. Like the rest of the songs on there, especially on the deluxe version, are just slow, melancholy, and I find myself wanting to skip ahead so I can get to the Sasha Fierce side of the album. So yeah, that doesn't really bode well for the I Am portion. Not taking away from her talent, it's just the songs there don't really grab me, and so therefore, it's the lowest one on the list. Coming in at number eight is the Cowboy Carter album. I know, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. The album just came out, and yes, it's making history. Yes, she had a lot of dynamic tracks on there where she's trying different things, and I really appreciate what Beyonce tries to bring to the music game in reference to bringing new styles and history, and hey, that's all great. But the album just drags in so many places. Like honestly, after the first song of this album, it's not until we get to Texas Hold'em that I start getting engaged again. That's like four or five different songs I gotta sludge through to get to that track. From there, she bounces between songs that, you know, are a little bit more poignant and melancholy, but have good lyrics and good beats to them so they feel good. And then some songs that they're experimental in nature, and I just found the experiment overall didn't work for me. Since the album came out back in in March of this year, I have listened to the album in its entirety like maybe two more times. There are some standout tracks in there that I absolutely love, like Tyrant and River Dance. But overall, it just doesn't give me the vibe and feel of a Beyonce album that catches more of my attention than some of the other ones do on this list. Sorry, Cowboy Carter fans, but this one is very, very low tier on my list. Number seven on the list is the Lemonade album. This is another album that I'm sure people are gonna fight me on, but just hear me out. Again, I judge albums based on when I'm listening to it, how often am I gonna skip through? And I found that of the 12 tracks that are on Lemonade, I could easily skip through like half of them and be totally fine. Now, as a cohesive work, this works absolutely great. If I'm watching the story that's being told by way of the music video anthology, then as a visual piece, this works absolutely amazingly. Me driving in my car, listening to Lemonade, a lot of it does not connect with me. Some of it's very slow in places. Some areas of it, like the Daddy's Lesson song, I can recognize that is a good song, but it's not one that appeals to me personally. And so as great of a body of work as Lemonade is, if I'm looking at on a day-to-day -day basis, what Beyonce albums would I go to to listen to? Lemonade would just not be it. There are some standout cuts I would totally go to, but not enough of that album was there to really move me as much, and so therefore, that's why it's at number seven on the list. At number six on the list, we have Dangerously In Love. This was her very first studio album, and some of you may think, that album's so old, she was still trying to find herself. How is that ranking higher than a Lemonade or a Cowboy Carter? The songs on that album that are good are absolutely great, fantastic, standout, amazing. Crazy In Love, classic, fantastic beat, energetic verse by Jay-Z, bringing it with the uh-ohs courtesy of Mrs. Carter on the track. Baby Boy, Sean Paul on it, brand new rhythm style, excellent beat. Beyonce on there, showing a stylistic difference that we hadn't heard before. Track is absolutely killer. Heck, even some of the slow jams, like Me, Myself, and I, again, iconic track. Love the theme of it. Love the direction that she went in for that track. But the songs on this album that don't work, if I never heard them again, 
I'd be totally fine. She has a duet on here with Luther Vandross, The Closer I Get To You. The song itself, it's sung pretty decently, but I just don't like her rendition of it. And there's parts of the R&B-ish songs where it definitely sounds like she's still trying to find herself. But again, the tracks on here that I like, I can listen to those nonstop, more so than some of the tracks on Lemonade or Cowboy Carter. Thus, it gets ranked at number six for me. Number five, we're now at the middle tier, and the album that I put at the middle tier was the Beyonce album, the, the self-titled album that changed the industry forever. It came out on a Friday, and then the industry said, oh wait, Beyonce wants to come out on a Friday? Everybody moves to Friday, forget Tuesday, we're going to Friday. I remember when this album dropped because my cousin was living with me at the time, and we were up at midnight when she looked on her phone and looked at me and said, hey, Beyonce dropped the album. And I looked at her like, what are you talking about? And then so we went to my computer and sat there at midnight for the next hour and a half watching back-to-back -back music videos that Beyonce had made with all the songs on this album. So just that moment alone in and of itself, her dropping that on that Friday like a surprise was very, very iconic. But again, we're 12 years removed from that. Long-term wise, what about the songs? I found as I was going back through the songs that many of the songs that I saw 12 years ago on that midnight that gelled well because of the video, by themselves, they're just like, okay, listens. I think she had really ramped up the beat production on this by that time. She had started to find her voice. She was definitely oozing a lot more sexual and sensuality than she had before on previous albums. And so there's a lot of that throughout that sounds great. Like some of her most iconic lines come from this album. And yet as a replay, it's not as cohesive of a piece as I'd like it to be. In fact, I'd say honestly, the run from Drunken Love to Blow to No Angel to Partition to Jealous to Rocket even are, is like stellar. Like that's a stellar, what, six song run? But then you get Mine, Clunker, XO, Fantastic, Flawless. And then for me, Superpower through Blue, it just, it makes the album end on such a slow decline that you're just kind of like, this is, this is it, we're just going out with a whimper? Uh, oh, okay. Now to be fair, at some point she released a platinum edition that had some extra songs. So we got 7-Eleven, which is like top tier Beyonce, almost in the same vein as the single ladies. You have uh, the Flawless remix with Nicki Minaj on it, fantastic. Drunk in Love remix with Kanye, Kanye's part is great. They could have just made that its own thing and then not attach the whole previous song to the end of Kanye's verse, but whatever. Um, Ring Off's great, Standing on the Sun. Like the bonuses on that really save this from being at a lower tier. But again, some of those songs, the earlier part of the album, while on the first edition were okay, didn't really have as much replay value as I'd like. So yeah, that's why this one ends up in the mid tier. There are definitely more tracks on this album that I like than I did on Cowboy Carter on I Am and on Lemonade, but the other albums that are coming up have far more classic standout tracks that I would gravitate to more so than the ones on the Beyonce album. Next up on this list here is kind of a toss up. It's really a tie between the B-Day album and the Four album. Now, when I did my analysis of the number of songs that I liked versus the songs I didn't like, B-Day, I liked 12 of the 16 tracks on the deluxe edition, right? And then on the, the next album in the list, which is the Four album, I liked apparently liked 12 of the 14 tracks. Now, here's the thing. I don't find myself really going back to the Four album all that much. And listening to it again today, I realized I actually enjoy a lot of the album. But I think that because the party jams are so much more easily accessible on the B-Day album, that I actually would rank that one slightly higher. But according to the numbers, Four is actually higher. And I think that was interesting because that's the album that came out where Beyonce was kind of in a lull in her career. She was still putting out stellar stuff, but just people weren't really checking for her as heavily when the Four album came out. It wasn't until the surprise self-titled album came out that people were back on the Beyonce train. But the B-Day album was the second album that came out after Dangerously In Love. And that was the first Beyonce album that I truly felt was like a cohesive, piece, especially the initial drop that wasn't the deluxe album. It was 10 songs and of those 10, I'd say like nine were stellar. So they added on like some more songs and then three of those extra songs I liked. So it was like uh, 12 out of 16 songs. But yeah, the order of the songs and how they played in clubs and the iconicness of the videos, all that totaled up to an album that I can play it back to back. And even the songs that are skippable, occasionally I'll be like, you know what? 
I'll sit through this because I like the feeling tone that the flow of this album is giving me. And so this is one of those that up until some of her other albums came out was like my go-to Beyonce album. Now as for Four, Four was an album that when it was first released, the, the order of the tracks, it didn't draw me in because like on the original version that came out, one plus one was the first track. So you're opening up a Beyonce album with a super slow track, which she tried also on the I Am album and I was not a fan of that album. But when they put out the deluxe edition, they put the song titles in different order and so suddenly it made it a more enjoyable album. Let this be a lesson to you musicians out there, song order definitely matters. And yeah, I found in going back to it, when I'm listening through it, it's like, oh snap, I actually like a lot of this album. So I gotta now start listening to that more often. So suffice to say, yeah, B-Day and 4 could easily switch places in my in my timeline. For this one, I'll say, for purposes of the numbers that I did, that B-Day will be 4 and then 4 will be 3. That sounded really weird. That leads me to the number two Beyonce album on my list. Are you ready for it? It is the Sasha Fierce side of the I Am Sasha Fierce album. Now, earlier I said the I Am album, it's like a very slow burn. I liked two of the nine songs on that side. Well, on the Sasha Fierce side of things, I liked a whopping eight out of nine songs. And even the one that I wasn't necessarily feeling, it wasn't so bad that if pressed, I couldn't listen to it. The deluxe version of the Sasha Fierce side of the album is chock full of classic, classic tracks. You have single ladies. Obviously you have single ladies, it's a classic. You have radio, decent song. You have diva. That's a great song. You got Sweet Dreams, fantastic song. You have Video Phone, and she also did a version of that with Lady Gaga. Both of those versions are fan-freaking-tastic. You have Hello, Ego, like all of these songs were iconic to me, and there are ones that like, because the first side of I Am Sasha Fierce was so slow, she made sure that the back half of that album was chock full of club bangers and I love me a good club banger. I love when Beyonce's in her club banger mode, which we'll get to in a second for the number one album. But suffice to say, yeah, so the Sasha Fierce side of this album was complete banger. I can still bump that to this day and have a grand old time dancing around in my house or in my car. And speaking of club Beyonce, the number one album on my mountain of Beyonce list is Renaissance. Beyonce's Renaissance album is the only album in her entire catalog where I liked every single song. In fact, you can look on this channel to the day that I did a review for this album, and I was surprised that as I was listening to the album, I didn't hear a single song that I would skip. Are there songs that I like more than others? Obviously, but there's no songs that I outright hated or that I, I would feel myself ever getting tired of. And so for me, out of the, the 16 songs on this album, I said I liked 16 of them. Like, Renaissance was Beyonce in her bag of knowing who she fully was, of being able to have a theme which was club dance tracks and executing it to the fullest. And she clearly took her time during the pandemic writing this album because it shows the way that it was executed, the way that it came out, the fact that there's no videos for it and you have to go to see the freaking concert to get visual concepts, which I did go to and was also amazing. Like Renaissance as an experience was the totality of Beyonce at her high powers. And that's why the Renaissance album to me deserves to be on the top tier of the Beyonce playlist. So that's it. That's my ranking of Beyonce's albums from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. Let me know which ones you agreed with, which ones you disagreed with, and let me know in the comments what your listing of Beyonce's albums would be from least to greatest or from greatest to least. Whatever you want to do. It's your world. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys for watching. I am APT Songs. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace. I don't wear no sweaters, keep my neck and my head bundled up together thanks to my hoodie. About to hop in my ride, top down, cool breeze, but I'm warm inside cause of my hoodie. Watching Dodgers run by, see how hot cutie is, she be catching my eye wearing that.